During the months of June, July, and August, I spent many hot summers of my childhood at my grandmother's house, further west on the island of Cape Breton. The forest was plentiful, the plains were a vibrant green, and my grandmother's house was a rickety old two-story that was built sometime in the 50s and looked like it didn't belong. Despite its shortcomings, my childhood summers spent here were some of the best I ever had. There were no other children to play with for the next few miles towards town, but I made my own fun running through fields of grass and smelling flowers in my grandma's garden. I can still recall the smell of my Nana's butterscotch muffins wafting through an open window, sweet and heavenly, and beckoning me inside. I can still remember the sound of cicadas and a warm breeze brushing my skin. I can still remember my grandma's face watching me from underneath the porch step, smiling with all her teeth and calling me to come inside. There were a lot of rules at my grandma's house, like no running inside the house with my shoes on and not playing in the garden. Some of them didn't make sense to me, like locking the windows and doors before bed, even though we lived miles from society. Turning off the television at eight and being in bed by nine was the worst on a night with no school. There were even unspoken rules, ones that I didn't ask my grandma about. Things like not sleeping with our arms and legs off the bed. Things like checking the windows and doors twice. Things like not pulling the shower curtain closed all the way, or hiding under beds and in closets, or pulling the cord to the attic off the nail it was wrapped around. Though some things were odd, my grandma was a very well-liked woman. She was lithe and her hair was long, shining a bright silver that looked like it reflected the moonlight. While she usually kept her hair up in a tight bun, making the frown lines on her face prominent, when her hair was down, she could have been called beautiful. When my grandpa was alive, he would call her a silver fox, as once she was young and beautiful and quick-tempered, but she was the only one that could say something witty and clever to one of my grandpa's quips. Age made her soften herself, her children made her emotional, my grandpa passing away made her sad and distant, but never once did I question her love for me. Grandpa spent a lot of time out west, so his visits home were rare but wonderful. My grandma used to say she liked having me around when he was gone during the summertime because it made her feel useful. I guess now that I look back on it, my Nana was lonely. I will try to detail the events that happened chronologically, but I was little and I blacked out a lot of my childhood here with good reason. My grandma lived under the house. I never saw her go to bed once. I never thought too much about it as I was a big kid that could sleep in a bed alone, with my covers tucked around me and my fingers and toes tucked safely away from the edge of the bed. There were quite a few times, though, that she would visit me from the window, standing in her garden bed to whisper things to me from behind the glass. My grandma's face was pressed up against the window pane, smiling with all of her teeth, her hands cupped around her face to see inside a little better. I never questioned it. Why would I? I was just a kid with a silly grandma. There was nothing else to it. Sweetie, can you open the door for me? I'm a little chilly out here, she told me once, her lips moving just slightly to sound out the words she spoke from behind the glass. The window was up high enough that I would see just above her collarbone, but I could see that she wasn't wearing anything. I laughed a childish laugh, and I responded with something like, That's silly grandma! You have a key to get inside. Come in before you get cold. My grandma wouldn't respond after this, but her smile would never waver, for not even a second. She was still standing in what would have been my Nana's garden, one of the things my grandma wouldn't let me do. Though she wouldn't say anything directly to me, every time I turned away from the window, I could hear her whisper things to me. I couldn't make it out, and I thought it could have been just nonsense. I didn't turn around to face her. I was uncomfortable with facing her for some reason, and would lay in my bed, listening to her mumble incoherent things until I would fall asleep. It became like a routine. I would listen to her whisper softly until I slept, and by the morning she would be in the kitchen, making breakfast and pretending like nothing happened. My grandma would call me silly when I tried to confront her about it, and told me I had a vivid imagination in the way adults would tell kids. I never really brought anything up to her after this. It was like a game between us. 
Every couple of nights, my grandma would come to the window and tell me to let her inside. Sometimes she would tell me that I was a good kid. Sometimes she would tell me I was a bad child. Once, and only once, did I see her smile drift from her face. She had been pestering me every night since she had started this game between us. I would ask her, beg her, plead her to just go away and let me sleep, that I was too tired to play and I didn't want to anymore. It wasn't until I got aggravated enough to yell at her that she left me alone for a few days, but not very long. I already told you I don't want to play anymore. Just come inside yourself and go to sleep. Her smile turned into a frown, but the look in her eyes made me uncomfortable. She didn't whisper to me that night, but every few moments I would turn around and find her watching me, frowning and glaring. I don't know how I managed to fall asleep, but I do remember waking up to the smell of bacon on the frying pan and the sound of my grandma humming a song. One night, I decided to purposefully unlock the door. I waited until my Nana went to bed to creep across the cold floor, unhook the latches from the front door, and ran to my room to wait underneath the covers for my grandma to finally give the game up. She didn't come to the window that night. She came through my bedroom door. I could hear her get on all fours, I could hear her shuffle across the floor. I could hear her crawl under my bed. And that night, I heard her whispering from underneath my mattress, with my ear pressed up against the bed and the covers pulled over my head. I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. I can smell you. I shifted on the bed, with my back facing the wall and the window. I didn't want to play this game anymore. I can smell your fricking liver. The helplessness of knowing there was no one I could call to, to wake me up from this bad dream, was a feeling I'd like to never experience again. I'm going to crawl into your insides, you little bag of crap. I can't tell you what she continued to whisper to me from underneath my mattress. I blocked a lot of it out, curled myself into my blankets and made sure there were no parts sticking out before I slept. I can tell you that when I opened my eyes, a crack peered out from my blankets I could see my grandma's eyes watching me from the bottom of my bed. I don't know how long I laid there, paralyzed with fear, but I did fall asleep and managed to wake up the next day without my Nana watching me from under the bed. If she noticed the unlatched door, she didn't say anything. The look she gave me was a curious side eye as she put eggs on my plate. I can tell I broke her heart a little when I asked to go home. From that night on, to the next few nights before I went home, I made sure the door was locked twice. She visited me repeatedly until I left. I didn't look at the house getting smaller in the rear view window, feeling like if I did, I might have seen her watching me back. I didn't go back to that house over the summertime. My grandma came to visit me quite a few times at my house, but there was nothing out of the ordinary as far as I can tell. The nightly visits were over, and a few years after that, my grandpa was diagnosed with late-stage Alzheimer's. My grandma and my grandpa were two of the most in-love people that you could have met without being overly showy. My grandpa's sneaky kisses behind the back of grandkids and the smile on my grandma's face when he would ask her for coffee was proof. I could see the pain on her face when she would talk about how he forgot her name again that day or couldn't remember the name of his kids. I watched my grandma suffer through my grandpa's disease as he slipped, 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 and finally slipped away. My grandma died a while after that, hooked up to hospital tubes and being sassy to nurses. Thankfully, she never had to experience the deterioration of her mind as Alzheimer's took her away from us. My grandma was spry, beautiful, clever, and a little weird. It wasn't until we went back to clean her things from her house that I asked my mom about it. She told me a lot of things that I wouldn't have been told as a child. She told me my grandpa was a war veteran who married a much, much younger girl who worked at a flower shop. They lived in poverty for most of their lives, and when he couldn't afford an engagement ring, he built her a house with his own two hands instead. I asked her in the middle of this about my childhood. I didn't mention the things I experienced. I felt like she, too, would have given me a flippant wave and a spiel about my imagination as a kid. Your grandma was a little superstitious. For a short time, we thought that she might have been getting Alzheimer's herself. My mother sighed as she tucked photographs into a cardboard box. There were just little things, like not remembering where she put her keys, 
forgetting about doing things in her garden, just little things. Suddenly, I felt like there was a weight lifted off my chest. That could have very well been the explanation for the oddities and the weirdness. I felt kind of rude saying it out loud myself. My mother got me to help her pack boxes into the back of her car, ready to start moving out her things from the house and let it become an abandoned shack in the middle of nowhere. When we finished packing, I hopped in the passenger seat, lit up a smoke, and looked back to give one final farewell to the place where I spent a lot of time with my favorite grandma in the world. The only thing is, as we were driving back home, why did I see her watching me from underneath the step with a smile on her face and far too many teeth? <laughs>